Roadrunner Rundown on Bakersfield.com and the CSUB Roadrunners Digital Network. Live from the Dignity Health Studios in downtown Bakersfield, California. And welcome once again to Roadrunner Rundown, the official program, CSUB Roadrunner Athletics. Corey Costello with you. Thanks so much for joining us once again here from downtown Bakersfield. As you know what, we got a great program. It is that time of year where baseball season starts. The CSUB Roadrunners in action this weekend. They open up against Creighton at Hartfield, and the 2015 Roadrunners picked to, to uh, finish third in the Western Athletic Conference, and we'll speak with uh, their head coach, Bill Kernan, who decided to come back after uh, announcing a retirement last year. He said, you know what? I got a good team in 2015. I'm going to come back, and uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. So Coach Kernan will join us on the program as, again, the Roadrunners get ready to open up this week, and they've got actually a seven-game homestand to start the season three this week against Creighton four games next week against Northern Kentucky. So a lot of Roadrunners baseball coming up. It's a big weekend in general. Of course, women's basketball playing a couple games. Very important to them in the Western Athletic Conference standings. Thursday, they'll host Pan American, who's in second right in front of the Roadrunners. And Saturday, they'll host New Mexico State, who is uh, right above Bakersfield as well in the first spot in the Western Athletic Conference standings. So big weekend on campus for CSUB baseball, women's basketball as well. But once again, head coach Bill Kernan of CSUB baseball will join us for a couple segments coming up. We'll talk some uh, Roadrunners baseball, kind of go through the returners, the lineup a little bit, some of his pitching stuff as well here for 2015. Also on the program, coming up in the final segment, Jason Gall will join us. He's our head water polo coach. The Roadrunners rank 20th in the country right now. They're on a four-game winning streak, as a matter of fact, as well. They're back in action at the Cal Baptist Mini Tournament number two this weekend in Riverside. So we'll speak with Coach Gall coming up as well a little bit later on the program about Roadrunners water polo and of course they are uh, off to a pretty good start ranked 20th in the country as well so we'll chat with him and uh, of course much much more coming up on the program including news and highlights what a busy weekend slash week we had last week we'll start with basketball on the men's side the team at home concluding their four game homestand last week at the Eccardo Center we'll start with Thursday's game against Utah Valley runners looking for four straight Looking good early. Several players involved with strong showings in this one, including Kevin Mays off a miss right there, and then the Kevin Mays spin and put back for CSUB. Ali Ahmed also getting rolling early. Two of his 17 right there. Nice jump shot from Ali with a turnaround jumper. Story of the game, though, was Jalen Arrington. Here he is from the far corner in front of the Utah Valley bench as he gets a feed from Brent Rapp. CSUB goes on a 19-0 run. And Arrington was hitting them all over as uh, this one almost a turnover. Knocked out to Arrington. One on the shot clock deep downtown. No problem. Arrington knocks it down once again. CSUB led by 17 at this point. And then another feed to Arrington. They would make it 20 as well as uh, the Roadrunners then still Arrington shooting. He can also he can drive a little bit as well. Arrington off the left edge. Drive the finish. Runners led by 20. CSUB on a roll. Utah Valley, though, not going away easily. They would respond with a 10-0 run to close the half as right here at top of the arc, they're going to find Mitch Bruneal with the three from up top. And then uh, Utah Valley, big three-point shooting team. They sent a lot of them up from the perimeter. Jaden Jackson this time going to give it in the post, and he's going to get it right back off the tip. Jackson with the three as it's a 12-point uh, game. Then uh, Zach Nelson. He was the big story of the game for Utah Valley. There's the runner in the lane for two, and Nelson not done. Closing seconds of the half. This ball missed by the runners. Watch Nelson. He's going to take the rebound. Watch where he takes off. Half court. Did he call glass? Doesn't matter. It counts, and it's a 12-point game at the or nine-point game at the half. Second half, CSU never trailed, but it got interesting. Nelson again, the rebound and the putback made it a six-point game with 14 minutes to play. The story from CSUB, though, was to make enough plays to keep the lead. Here's another jumper from Jalen Arrington with just over eight minutes to go. And then Brent Rapp would start to close things out. Here's the drive, the kiss off the glass. Runners by eight with five minutes to play. Utah Valley, though, right back with the drive, the finish, and the foul as Marcel Davis at the line going to make it a five-point game with this free throw. 
Four minutes to play. It's going to be Kevin Mays coming up off the Ali Ahmed miss. Mays, the rebound and putback. Runners by seven, 418 left. Then a nine point game with a minute 34 for CSUB. The lead, Dante Williams, the three to pull within six for Utah Valley. Final 12 seconds, CSUB by eight. Nelson again, long three. He buries it. Then the Roadrunners. Having trouble this all year. Turn it over on the inbound. And again, it's Nelson, left side three. This is going to be good as well. And it's a with just two seconds left. Jalen Arrington, though, fouled. And he gets the kind bounce on the second free throw. Tonight. Many people are going to look probably at the stat sheet and think about you know, Ali or Kevin or even Jalen. As I told our guys in the dressing room, I thought, uh, Abdi played a special game for us. Uh, when he was in the game, I didn't think their big man scored. Uh, I thought he did a good job of boxing his guys out, and then our guys finished. And that's been our biggest thing, uh, you know, here this year. That late in the game, if we give up a lead or something happens bad to us, uh, I think we've overcome that point that we can continue to be aggressive and make plays. So the Roadrunners hold on to win that one on Thursday, 72-69. Jalen Arrington, 19 points for the Roadrunners. Ali Haman had 17, and the runners win four straight. But then on Saturday night, national TV, Bakersfield falling just a little bit short. A pair of turnovers late in this one. This was a tightly contested game all game long. Grand Canyon, though, taking advantage of two late CES. Should be turnovers. They snapped the Roadrunners' four-game winning streak, 78-76. Upcoming for CES, should be they head back out on the road in a couple games in WAG play. Runners will be at Texas Pan American Thursday at 7 o'clock Central Time, the tip-off, and then Saturday night, first place, New Mexico State. They are 7-1 in the WAC. They will host the runners Saturday at 7 in Las Cruces. So the runners with a uh, with a 1-1 one and one weekend, they are now 4-4 four and four in conference play. Here's a look at the WAC men's basketball standings. New Mexico State up top 7-1, UMKC in second at 5-3. Grand Canyon now 5-3, but again, they are not eligible for the conference tournament. So looking at the standings, right now the runners in the third spot in the conference tournament, currently holding a tie break over Seattle. Of course, they've still got games coming up against Seattle, Utah Valley, Texas, Pan Am, Chicago State, and Kansas City uh, still to come on the Roadrunners schedule. So still a lot of basketball to be played, but runners sitting near the top half of the uh, of the conference standing. On to women's basketball. The Roadrunners, they were on the road. They're actually going to get back off the road this weekend, but on the road last week, they go to Grand Canyon. They win it on Saturday, 65-60. Tana Outland, 17 points. Runners had to go the comeback route, but they pull it off. 17 from Outland. Badabe Zampare, another double-double. 10 points and 16 rebounds in the victory, but it was a one-and-one -one trip. The runners lost in their Thursday game at Utah Valley, 70 to 58. But as I mentioned, women's basketball getting to come back home after a long week, a couple weeks on the road. They'll be at Tech, the host Texas Pan American Thursday at 7. Remember, Pan Am in second in the conference, runners in third. New Mexico State then comes to Bakersfield Saturday at 1 o'clock at the Icardo Center. Peeking in on the Western Athletic Conference women's basketball standings, New Mexico State 8-0. Oh, they are on a roll right now, top of the conference. Texas Pan Am at 6-1 there. The Roadrunners right there at 5-3. So Bakersfield uh, with a chance to uh, maybe take one more game and uh, catch up with Pan Am and uh, Seattle 4-4 four four as uh, we get into the second round of, uh, of conference play in women's basketball as well. So two games upcoming for CSUB at home and a chance to make some move in the conference standings. Hey, CSUB Volleyball, they uh, – of course, continue to have uh, celebrate their Western Athletic Conference championship, and the Roadrunner is honored in a pretty special ceremony this past week as uh, Bakersfield Mayor Harvey Hall was on hand as there's a look at some of the mayor mayoral medals of appreciation that were given to the CESGB team and a couple plaques for the coaching staff as well as Mayor Hall shows his support for the Roadrunners, greeting every player and uh, every coach as well. He sort of talked about why he does these sort of special recognitions as there he is with Sidney Haynes and, of course, head coach Giovanna Mello in her first season with the Runners winning the Western Athletic Conference Championship. He talked about why, as a mayor, he likes to do these every special ceremonies. I do a elementary school event if the kids will invariably ask me, how do you like being mayor? And I tell them, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best job in America. And uh, the reason why I feel that way is because every day, practically, I get to do very positive things in the community. I don't participate in any of the negative stuff. I'm the guy above the clouds and where the air is always fresh and the sun always shines, okay? You know, and, and to be a part of uh, Cal State Athletics as long as I have been and, and to support the various teams, I'm, I'm happy to do that. You know, and, and uh, uh, coming out today and making sure that uh, 
I give all of you the appropriate recognition that you deserve for the outstanding season that uh, you just completed. I know, it, it, it really is crazy, but you know, I think things like this reminds you a, li a little bit of that moment, you know, and, and I think it, it kind of puts everything in perspective, but yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was a good season and, and they deserve this kind of recognition, we went through a lot, and it's, it, it, it has sinked in, but every day something like this happened, it just reminds you of everything. So there you go, the Roadrunners honored by Mayor Harvey Hall for their Western Athletic Conference Championship, uh, Mayor Appreciation Medals, and uh, plaques as well for the uh, coaching staff. So congratulations to CSUB Volleyball, most of those uh, student athletes and coaches involved in the sand season, which we'll be talking about on the program in the uh, in the weeks to come. Hey, on the uh, women's soccer front, the uh, the National Signing Day this past weekend, what a signing day it was for women's soccer. Recruiting class of 12 incoming freshmen was announced by head coach Gary Kearney, the largest class since CES should be started women's soccer a few decades ago. Head coach Gary Kernin uh, putting a stamp on the program, and he talked to uh, our GoRunners.com about his first offseason recruiting effort. Uh, we're obviously very, very excited about this group that we're bringing in. Um, you know, we've, we've shot for a profile on quite a few areas that we feel these girls hit. Um, obviously, an academic profile was the most important. Uh, they're all you know, very, very good in the classroom uh, and, and will really, really help our culture in that sense. Um, soccer players, they can all do exactly what we're trying to get the program and, and, the, and the way we want the players to play. Um, athletically, they can all, they've all got high upsides um, and they can all be pretty consistent in, in doing what we want from, from our strength and conditioning side of things too. Um, a lot of potential there. And then from a personality point of view, uh, you know, we want players that are going to fit into to the, again, the culture, what we want here. We want enthusiastic people. We want this, you know, this program to be about people who will scream roadrunners from the top of their voice and be proud of being here. So these, this group definitely will do that. So they're excited. Uh, we're excited. We feel that it meets, like I said, meets our our requirements and our criteria on the field. It meets it in the weight room. It meets it in the locker room and it meets it in the community. So uh, it's an exciting day for us, for sure. So once again, 12 student athletes coming in for CESUB women's soccer uh, as well. Good signing day for CESUB. On one uh, note from the water polo side of things, as we mentioned, Jason Gall, our head coach, going to join us coming up. But couple more victories for the 20th ranked Roadrunners this past weekend at Fresno Pacific. CESB beating the host Sunbirds 14 to 6 and then Cal State Monterey Bay in the nightcap 12 to 6 in the non-conference matches. Roadrunners playing in Riverside this weekend against Whittier and Redlands at the uh, Cal Baptist Mini Tournament number 2. As uh, Actually, their winning streak started at the number 1 tournament a couple weeks ago. Uh, they'll play it again at Riverside this weekend. On a baseball note, CSUB, as I mentioned, home this weekend, opening the 2015 season against defending Big East champion Creighton at Hartfield. Friday and Saturday's games at 6 o'clock. Sunday, we throw the first pitch at noon. Hey, don't forget, Saturday's our Diamond Dash, presented by Knights Jewelers. One of you lucky uh, fans will get a chance to run on the field. Actually, a bunch of you, but only one of you will walk away with actual diamonds from uh, from Knights Jewelers. But uh, we'll have a, a contest where we scatter boxes throughout the diamond, and you run and try to hopefully select the one that has uh, the diamond goodies inside. And uh, that's all courtesy of Knights Jewelers. So, again, uh, Saturday, 6 o'clock. So it's a good Valentine's Day. You take your girl to the ball game. Maybe she walks away with some diamonds, and your, your investment is minimal. So there you go. You can't beat it. More details online at GoRunners.com. Tickets available at ValleyTix.com. Speaking of baseball, time to speak with our head coach, Bill Kernan. When we come back, we'll speak with Coach Kernan about the 2015 season. Opening day is Friday. That's all coming up next. Stick around. This is... Road Runner Rundown. One thing about living in Kern County is all the great schools. Fairfield Christian Service! Stop now! Right here! And no matter what school you go to, there's still one thing. One thing! One thing! We can all agree on. Kern Schools is the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our auto rates as low as 1.99 APR with no payments up to 90 days. Kern Schools, the biggest little credit union in town. Welcome everyone, Nissan of Bakersfield has everything for the perfect car buying experience. 
like our beautiful showroom, full of the most popular Nissan models for you to explore. And our fully stocked parts and service department from everything from genuine Nissan accessories to factory trained service technicians to keep your car running its best. Plus, our massive inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles means you're guaranteed to find the right one for you. Nissan of Bakersfield is where you should buy your next car. Current Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, transportation, and more. Visit currentbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on currentbusinessjournal.com. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on Bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. That ball is gone. Baseball hey, season no is upon us, and the CSUB West. Roadrunners open the 2015 season at Hartfield this week, hosting defending Big East champion Creighton Friday at 6, Saturday at 6, and Sunday at noon. Catch your first glimpse of the 2015 Roadrunners, expected to be a major contender in the Western Athletic Conference. Tickets are available at valleyticks.com, or purchase a special Roadrunners value pass and enjoy reserved seats at each baseball game, plus a ticket to the critical Western Athletic conference series for women's basketball beginning thursday versus pan american at seven and continuing saturday at one against new mexico Alex state the class, knocks it down and there it is CSU that's three baseball games and score. two first place women's basketball games for just twenty dollars purchase at the Accardo center box office or by calling 654 blue baseball season opener women's basketball conference play and a twenty dollar value pass all this week at csub we're all runners in a fertile valley, a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community, a tradition of athletic excellence. Now a part of the Western Athletic Conference, CSU Bakersfield. And welcome back into Roadrunner Rundown as we continue on the program. By the way, uh, Jason Gall, our women's uh, water polo coach, coming up a little bit later on the show. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a uh, the, here's a great part about college baseball. It starts in February. We're not waiting until late in the year. We're not waiting until the spring. We'll start in you know late winter and get the and get games going, which is awesome. Of course, it feels like spring here in Bakersfield anyway. But the uh, 2015 Roadrunners baseball season is set to open this weekend, and we're joined in studio now by head. Coach Bill Kernan. Coach, good to see you again. Uh, you ready for uh, season number, what, seven now here at CSUB? So, Hard to uh, believe. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, it's it's been a pretty pretty interesting ride so far. and We've had some things that we've accomplished, but we still have uh, other things out in front of us that we think we need to get done, number one being to make it to the postseason. Yeah, now uh, you know you're back for another year. Are you happy to be back for at least at least one more season with uh, with the squad? Yeah, because this is a really uh, a really pretty special group as far as their chem chemistry, the the uh, the leadership. Because there's there's a lot of veterans. Uh, they played together. Almost everybody uh, is back on the position player side. Mm -hmm. We lost Oscar and and Gwyn, but um, yeah, it's a really interesting team to be around. And uh, I guess. My reputation is out there a little bit about how I coach, and I, I'll tell you, this is the least disciplined team I've ever had to uh, to be with. Discipline meaning me. You have it, but me discipline, providing yeah. discipline. Uh, the leadership has been really outstanding on the field, and I, I love having that. I was going to say because these guys have been around so long, and, and 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 they know what you require, they know what is expected of them. I mean, I sometimes the media people say, "Well, I go to practice, and Coach Kerner doesn't show up till forty-five minutes in," and I said. 
the guys are they know what to do. They know exactly what's going on. I mean, right? I mean, they know without having to be told do this, do this, and this. What's expected of them in practice? Yeah, they not only that they start practice two hours before we get there <laughs> because because of the rules yeah. about time. Yeah. So they're out there far before us because they have to put in the time, and we can't be with them more than right. twenty hours a week. So right. uh, they've been great about about that. Have you ever had a team, and maybe apart from the? 09 to 010 squads because it was the first year, but with this many returning position players? It's the most I've ever had yeah. in my whole career, let alone here. Okay. Uh, because what tends to happen is like what has happened here a couple of times where you have juniors that have outstanding years and they get drafted and they and they leave. And uh, this time we had some seniors that, that stayed. And, I, and I'm telling you, it's that, I mean, McKenzie, let's use McKenzie mm-hmm. as an example. He was pretty good when he was a junior. Right. He was unbelievable. When he was a, you know, <laughs> right. so we didn't really know that McKenzie was going to be who he was as a senior. Yeah, uh, and so we're hoping that that happens uh, with a few guys on this team. Now, uh, talk about the defensive aspect of things. With this much, I mean, every position player except one, uh, for the most part, a regular starter that uh, that graduated and then was was signed a free agent deal. So you've got so many different pieces to choose from, and a lot of starters returning in the infield and outfield. So. Uh, defensively, you've got to be very excited about what this group can bring to the table. This is a great defensive team. It's not just good. Uh, regardless of whatever we else we do, we can we can play defense, <laughs> and it's going to be as good as like a, a top ten in the country type defense. That's good for the pitching because if you, if you're smart, you just throw it up there and let them put it in yeah. play and let those guys make plays for you. This is the most depth I've ever had. Also, in my coaching career, as, as you know, I've had small rosters, right. and. Uh, but now we have we have depth all over the place, and we have some young guys developing behind the older ones, and uh, so the the continuity f- is going to be far better than it's been. Does it help? Because I would think sometimes you know, guy baseball players they want to play, and so sometimes they might be good, but maybe the guy ahead of them is just a little bit that much better. But does it help that you've got these seniors on the team that have put their time in as freshmen and sophomore, where they saw limited playing time, and now the last couple of years they've been playing to help encourage those guys that might not be playing as much, but maybe they realize, hey, you know, I watched a Hayden Carter for years, and now he's going to be a starting pitcher. Uh, does it maybe help them a little bit to, to you know, to put their time in? And uh, I think so. I think they see that, uh, you know, here's here's somebody that's been here and and. Uh, even if I'm playing well, I know that that's because here's what I do. I mean, I respect the fact that somebody's been in the program yeah. for so long. So that's one of the reasons Hayden's starting on on Friday because he's been here four years, mm-hmm. and he's earned that, and he's good enough to do it too. <laughs> right. but, but but I mean, I really respect the, that, and uh, so I'm I'm never been somebody, and I won't, no matter how much depth we have, have somebody that plays for you for three years, and then some phenom comes in, and you go, okay, well, thanks a lot, you know, but we got this <laughs> other guy now, and you get to sit on the bench when you're a senior. That's right. never that's never going to happen in this program. Yeah, and 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 it's paid off so far with the success that you guys have had. Now, offensively, where does this team stack up? I mean, you you who who are a few of the guys you really expect to sort of stand out at the plate this year? That's an interesting question because I think if I had to identify uh, one thing that that has uh, let us down, uh, particularly in the postseason and toward the end of seasons, it would be our offense. Mm -hmm. Not just the hitting, just scoring runs. Because we've we've had some, like, for example, last year when we played Utah Valley in the semifinal of the WAC, uh, we got 13 hits off that guy, but we only got two runs. So there's other things besides just getting hits. Uh, this team has shown so far in the fall that it's the best hitting team we've had. And I can't identify one or two guys. That's the good thing. Yeah. I mean, it's gone up and down the, the lineup, including some of the young ones. Uh, but definitely I would expect Miles and, and Metzger and Hine and Williams and Max Carter and yeah. Trowbridge. I mean, yeah, I'm expecting those guys to, to step up and have big years. You know, Solomon Williams, one of those guys last year that uh, – Started out sort of slow. I think the junior college to, to, to this level sort of took a little bit of time to get used to, but just started murdering the ball late in the late in the season. And unfortunately, a shoulder injury kind of derails him uh, in the conference tournament. I mean, he he hit a home run in in, uh, in Mesa that is still floating out there somewhere. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and, and obviously, he's going to be a guy that's going to be coming back a little bit from that injury. But again, you expect him to 
to to be a big power hitting uh, power hitter for your squad this year? Yeah, the objective right now is to to let him continue to rehab and continue to get his swing back and and uh, hopefully by the beginning of the conference he'll be 100% and all this will be behind him and mm -hmm. and if that happens he'll he'll have a big year I think. Absolutely. Uh, we need that and um, he he'll he he showed what he could do at the end of last year so if he can get it cranked up and the he'll be the four hitter and we will have something pretty good there. Yeah, and I I mean it was one of those that ball that he hit in the in the game in the win over Sacramento State. I mean, we're talking about a a, a ball that not only went a long way, it left in a hurry. You really see it. It's usually if it goes a long way, it takes its time. To, I mean, it left in a hurry and just went for a mile. You drilled right into that yeah. embankment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, just stuck. It didn't. It yeah. didn't bounce. It was like when you're playing golf and you hit it on a soft green and the ball kind of sticks in. It's exactly what that baseball did. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he hit what I don't know six home runs maybe yeah. the last couple three weeks. Right. So, we know what he can do now, and, and uh, that's always what we suspected would happen. But that's what I'm talking about with the transition. It, you don't come into this level of baseball and right. just have it all figured out. I yeah. mean, it takes some time. Absolutely. Now, offensively, last year, you know, David Metzger was a freshman. He shined at second base, and he led the team in batting average. Uh, you know, not much to look at as far as uh, you know, the, his size, but he's turned into a heck of a, heck of a ball player. Metzger he? is um, uh, a Pedroia, Eckstein type of right. a guy that just uh, has very special uh, competitive uh, fire in him yeah. and uh, toughness and just a ball player. He, yeah. he's, he's that definition that people like to talk about of somebody that's a ball player. Yeah. And uh, just – just gonna, it's going to be amazing. Wait till you see what he does over the time that he's only a sophomore, right? He's, and he's probably going to stay all the way through his senior year because the, but I, but I wouldn't discount him going beyond and playing above this level because that's the kind of guy that he is. He's reminded me so much of when we saw Oscar Sanai come into the program, and as a freshman, he leads the way in batting average, and then you know just kind of he got progressively better at second base, and he got progressively better at the plate as far as an average hitter goes, and I mean, it looks like we're kind of just seeing that process repeated again, which is great. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a good analogy, uh, a good comparison. Um, but yeah, we we couldn't be happier with our middle infield. We think it's as good as anybody's. Yeah, Miles Jones at uh, shortstop. We'll get to that when we come back. Going to take a break and stick around for another segment. Sure. Talk some uh, talk some more infield. Talk a little uh, pitching as well. Coach Kernan's favorite uh, favorite aspect of the game. So we'll get to that next. Uh, stick around, folks. We're right back. This is Roadrunner Rundown. of our auto rates as low as 1.99 APR with no payments up to 90 days. Kern Schools, the biggest little credit union in town. Honey, have you called Ben Rice about fixing that toilet upstairs? You know, I saw a plumbing episode on the Fix-It channel. Yeah, I can fix it. You could try it yourself or you could just call Gunlax and save your marriage. Hey, honey, I think I did it! Gunlax, 327-3052. That wasn't so bad. We've never done marketing. It seems to be a little intimidating. You don't know what's available. You think you're going to sell your first child or it's going to be really expensive to do. But Heather really described everything in a way that we knew exactly what we were doing. There was nothing. No questions about it. She was very clear. Um, I really, really enjoyed that, that Heather took her time to get to know us as a family, get to know our business. From any from anyone that I do meet, I like to, you know, get to know them. We knew exactly what we were getting into, but really the results of it was far more than we ever expected. Um, I think it brought us to the forefront of most people's mind. So they heard our name and then all of the videos and pictures, the Bakersfield Live put a face to the name and they were able to connect that and know what our product was, but also know us as a family. Because of the Baker for California and because of Heather, generated so much buzz about our restaurant that we couldn't have done it alone. It all comes down to this. 
14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at orleansarena.com. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. We're back on Roadrunner Rundown talking baseball with CSUB head coach Bill Kernan. The Roadrunners open up this weekend against Creighton and Hartfield, 6 o'clock Friday, 6 o'clock Saturday, noon on Sunday. Uh, Creighton defending Big East champions coach. So obviously you guys are going to get a nice stiff test right out of the – I know it's been cold in Omaha, but those guys are still hitting plenty of baseballs, and they're going to be a, they're gonna be a good team uh, coming out here out west. Yeah, that, that obviously works against them a little bit, but their pitching is their strength. And so it doesn't matter if you're outside or <laughs> they, they, don't worry. They've been, they've been throwing bullpens and they've been, yeah. so uh, that, that's going to be the, the test for us is if we can um, put the ball in play and score some runs off their pitching. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, they were in the, they were in the, you know, the, the, the tournament last year. So this is a team that uh, that's going to be pretty solid and uh, you're, you're pitching, you hinted about it a little bit, but uh, one of the areas and we talked about it before, but this is that year where some of your junior college guys that came in last year as juniors are expected to maybe hopefully make that turn uh, into uh, into dominance uh, dominance as seniors. So, what do you kind of look at when you see this pitching you know this pitching staff this year? The strength of it is their experience. Um, we don't have anybody. I shouldn't say anybody because we have a couple guys that can throw mm -hmm. throw hard. If, if you're looking at that, right? Um, but but basically, it's a it's a a command oriented approach with the pitchers that we have yeah. uh, and that's actually what works as a pitcher anyway uh, but we have some veteran guys we have depth we have we can go down pretty far into that into that pitching staff and still not really see much of a difference between top to bottom um, I think that's that's a pretty big deal in the you know with the schedule that we've got in the conference uh you know, if you get a lot of games, you get to Sunday in a, in a weekend series, and if you've really had to have a dogfight all the way through, and you're down to, you know, I'm going to have to use my six, seven, eight. <laughs> if ours and they will, I think will be are better than our opponents are going to be. That's going to win some games for us. I'm going to be surprised, Coach, if you get deep into your six, seven, eight guy in the bullpen ever, just because you know your guys don't. He doesn't go to the bullpen a lot. No. We, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be the case. That's going to be the case again. But I promise you <laughs> that there will be everybody used early. Okay, we're, we're going to give we're going to give everybody a shot. You won't see any nine inning. <laughs> I, I know I'm saying that, and then oh, for, Hayden will go nine. And oh, someone's oh, going to throw a gem. You're like, I don't want to take him out. He is dealing right now. No, you know what? I can't do it <laughs> if it's two to one and somebody's somebody's. You know. To, to go to the next guy uh, has never been something that I've felt comfortable with. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it makes him tougher for it. Uh, and, and so, obviously, a lot of pitching to, to work with. Now, one of the big things with pitching this year is uh, is is the baseball and uh, the change in the baseball. Matter of fact, I have a minor league baseball here, which is what uh, the same sort of thing you're using uh, now, which has got a lower seam. The, the college and high school baseballs at one point had uh, higher seams, more grip. These seams are pretty flat. What is that supposed to do? Is it gonna? I mean, I know it's supposed to probably help offense a little bit. So, have your pitchers said anything about the the new baseball, their change, the way they throw it, that kind of stuff? It wasn't as dramatic as I was expecting. Um, I think they feel that there's um, a little less movement, and 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 when the seams are lower, that affects your your, your breaking ball. And uh, but yeah, it was oriented toward offense. They, mm -hmm. The ball does go farther with the seams being lower because there's less friction. Uh, and they say 10 to 20 feet. I don't know if I've really seen that big of a difference. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the pitchers are all used to it now, and, and it, it really hasn't uh, so far been too much of an issue. I'm thinking what's going to probably benefit, I think it'll benefit, you know, the, the next level, the guys that go from, you know, having a ton of movement on their on their ba baseball when they're throwing it at the college level, now they're going to be scouted using the same 
piece of equipment they're going to use at the upper levels. You know, I know that was an issue with with bats years ago when inflated power numbers and guys would get to the minors and they couldn't hit with wood. Uh, so now we're going to see the pitchers using the same equipment. So I think that'll definitely help uh, the guys getting uh, scouted uh, throughout the season. Uh, looking, uh, going through a few more position players, we're talking about uh, the the returners and and one of those spots uh, is at shortstop Miles Jones now. Who I know you've been trying to move to shortstop the last couple of years, at least last year, but he was so good at third base, it was tough to do. Uh, but Miles is going to be at shortstop. Uh, I, I know it's tough to replace him at third. So who's kind of, you know, in uh, going to maybe see that time at third base if Miles is at short all year? There'll be more than one guy getting a shot, uh, and already has happened in the fall. But we're going to give them game time uh, experience mm-hmm. also. His brother uh, Malik is is one. Uh, Vilawald, uh, Cody White. Uh, Ryan Grojan, uh, even Joey Sanchez, who's the backup shortstop, uh, we've moved over there uh, because he's. These guys have had pretty good falls offensively, so mm-hmm. we're trying to get bats in the lineup, and um, and still have a mind on defense. I'm not going to expect anybody to be Miles Jones at third base. <laughs> uh, we're gonna, you know, I would never put that on anybody because it couldn't have been better. Yeah, but we need him at short, and right. he needs to be at short for his future. Yeah, and uh, he's been a guy, too. Came in as a freshman right away, made an impact. In the last couple of years, he's been very solid and uh, and, and, and preseason all-conference this year. So uh, he's one of those guys that's developed in the program and, and probably expect to have a pretty special year this year. Yeah, everybody expects that, and uh, he can handle that pressure. He's, he's, uh, he's being looked at very, very closely you know, by professional baseball, as he should be. Uh, but he, he knows how to – nothing nothing bothers him, yeah. and he'll be fine. And uh, this year, coming to the season, a uh, couple couple new guys helping you out. You've got uh, Coach Bob Macaluso and uh, uh, Coach Alex Hoover in in, uh, in working with your team. And uh, how's that been with the transition? It's really been good. I have to I have to publicly you know compliment them on the job they've done. It's really been outstanding uh, in every on and off the field. Uh, it's it's really been well done by them, um, and um, I appreciate it because you know. Needed that a little bit this year with mm-hmm. some things that are going on, and and um, I couldn't be happier. And 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 Rich Escalera was, you know, came back even though uh, he he's got to get his degree, and and so he's going to finish that. Came back as a volunteer, so this is a really good staff, and uh, I, I compliment them on the job they're doing. It's really been great because it allowed you a lot of time to continue working with the pitchers, obviously, which is uh, your area of expertise and your and your passion as well. Yeah, and and I've I've tried to. Um, I've tried to let Rich do some of that also, but I always work on the mental part of of, uh, of your preparation and your performance more than the physical part. Uh, and that gets lip service by everybody, mm-hmm. but not it doesn't get backed up by the time that's spent on it right. in practice. But I'll tell you right now, the world-class athletes that are out there are doing that. They mm-hmm. are working on the mental aspect of their game, on how they prepare, how they visualize. Uh, it's 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 a major major thing, and and they understand that. So I've always understood that. And I learned it from those kind of people, and so we spend more time on that, I think, than anybody else does. And so you're talking about velocity or different things in pitching. That's not what wins. Mm-hmm. That's not what wins. Uh, it's it's how you compete, and um, and. Uh, that's a general way to say it. I don't have time to explain <laughs> what I'm talking about necessarily there, but let's just say that when when our pitchers go out there, uh, they're better prepared mentally than whoever else is on the other side of the field. I can tell you that much. Nice, and that's obviously a, a huge part for any any pro athlete to or any potentially pro athlete or college athlete to be uh, that that aspect and, and have that uh, all squared away. And it seems like uh, for the most part, that is a uh, always been a huge part of what uh, of what your teams do. Well, I don't know if I have the time to tell you this, but sure. uh, Mick Gaston, who played in the program, came to the alumni game. We had our first alumni. Right, game. I was going to bring that up next. Yeah. It was so much fun to have those guys come. Yeah. Up. Anyway. Jimmy Connors is one of the examples that I've used as an icon in my own mind. I've seen him play live many times and studied him. And I mean, you talk about, I mean, he wasn't the best right. physical tennis player in the world. And he was number one for five years <laughs> right. in a row. You don't even do that, right? right? Well, we've always used him as an example. So Mick Gaston, who works for a power company, was doing some work in Santa Barbara on somebody's house and out walks Jimmy Connors. <laughs> And so Mick, you know, he's going, what? You know, Jimmy, this, you're Jimmy Cutter, yeah? yeah? He goes, I got to tell you, 
and he told the story of how we've used his examples yeah. and, and everything. And so Jimmy Connors actually got to know that we use him as a nice. A, yeah. So it was, yeah, there was an example I gave of a tennis tournament story. I saw him in Wimbledon and, and he was, he would sit with a towel over his head on the side by the uh, umpire's chair and he'd talk to the guy that he's playing and just bury them you know, <laughs> with, with stuff. And so we told him all that story. So, so Connors knows that now. So I thought that was kind of a fun, uh, fun story. Go. Yeah. And he said, he, he said that if I'm using him, I am one of the smartest coaches in the world. There, there you have it. So <laughs> you're getting, you're getting backup, which is great. And you guys did have that first alumni game. And unfortunately I was out of town. I missed it, but I saw a lot of photos and it looked like you had a great turnout and everyone had a good time. And you're at a point now where you actually have alumni. You've been in the program, you know, the program's been around for seven years now. So that's gotta be nice to see these guys come back oh yeah and they had some guys i mean they're, they're still playing pro yeah, ball yeah and uh so that was uh that was really a lot of fun and it was great to see him and i i hope that's a tradition that really really For gets sure. really gets cranked up because uh we, we do have some some outstanding guys that are uh coming back and and still in, in pro ball and, right. and there'll be others after this year yeah absolutely well uh, coach uh, good luck to you starting this weekend against creighton six o'clock on friday and saturday sunday at noon and uh, then again northern kentucky next week so a lot of uh, a lot of stuff uh, still to come a lot of games coming up and good luck and we'll catch up to, up to you throughout the season a lot of good stories getting ready to be told uh, that's what that's the great Looking part about it. baseball coach right. thanks so much we'll, we'll see you soon all right folks we're going to be right back uh, jason call gall our water polo coach will join us we'll talk about uh, their four game winning streak and their 20th ranking in the country as they get ready to go on the road for more action. Back after this, it's Roadrunner Rundown. One thing about living in Kern County is all these great rivalries. But despite all these rivalries, there's still one thing. One thing! One thing! We can all agree on. Kern Schools is the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our auto rates as low as 1.99 APR with no payments up to 90 days. Kern Schools, the biggest little credit union in town. Kern Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, transportation, and more. Visit kernbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on kernbusinessjournal.com. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. That ball is gone! Baseball season is upon us, and the CSUB Roadrunners open the 2015 season at Hartfield this week. Hosting defending Big East champion Creighton, Friday at 6, Saturday at 6, and Sunday at noon. Catch your first glimpse of the 2015 Roadrunners, expected to be a major contender in the Western Athletic Conference. Tickets are available at valleyticks.com, or purchase a special Roadrunners value pass and enjoy reserved seats at each baseball game, plus a ticket to the critical Western Athletic a conference series for women's basketball beginning Thursday versus Pan American at 7 and continuing Saturday at 1 against New Mexico Alley State. The class, knocks it down and there it is. CSU That's three baseball games and two score. first place women's basketball games for just $20. Purchase at the Accardo Center box office or by calling 654 Blue. Baseball season opener, women's basketball conference play, and a $20 value pass all this week at CSUB. We're all runners. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at orleansarena.com. In a fertile valley, 
a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community, a tradition of athletic excellence. Now a part of the Western Athletic Conference. CSU Bakersfield. Back here on Roadrunner Rundown, my thanks to Bill Kernan for joining us, CSUB baseball head coach. Runners open this weekend against Creighton, 6 o'clock Friday and Saturday and noon on Sunday. Women's basketball as well, big series this weekend. They'll be Thursday at home, 7 o'clock against Texas Pan American, the team above them in the standings by one game. And first place, New Mexico State on Saturday at 1. $20 value pass is available as well for the entire weekend of games. You can get them all for $20. Bucks. Uh, call 654-BLUE and reserve yours today. Another sport in action here uh, right now in the springtime as CES should be water polo ranked 20th in the country and uh, they got a four game winning streak going on right now and our head coach Jason Gall joins us in the studio coach hey congrats on the ranking and the winning streak uh, your team seems to be uh, kind of put it together right now yeah we're, we're playing pretty well um, we're still kind of putting pieces together um, I think we can uh, still get a lot better but um, you know off to a pretty good start yeah, and you went uh, went two in Riverside a couple weeks ago. You went two this past weekend in Fresno, and then uh, back to Riverside again this weekend for yep. a few more against Whittier and Redlands. So, uh, what's kind of been the, the difference in these last? I know you guys played a very tough schedule early, uh, especially against some teams in your conference. These non-conference games here lately, what's kind of been the difference for your squad? Um, yeah, I think uh, you know I, I definitely wanted to uh, get the team playing some tough competition mm -hmm. and and and. Uh, you know, every year um, we bring in new players. Uh, it's it's a it's a big jump from no matter where they came from to play against uh, the teams in our conference. So I like to um, get some of those games in early when they don't really count towards our right. actual conference conference games and get some experience. And so I think that that helped. And um, you know, we brought back a uh, most of the returners from last year. We only graduated one starter. From last year's group, so we have a good core coming back, or a good core that came back, and um, added some new pieces that have been really been helping. And um, you know, I think uh, you know, uh, position-wise, uh, you know, we're just we're just more solid all around um, in in all spots. You know, uh, you brought up uh, after the wins this past weekend, uh, some some new you know, some different defensive rotations and stuff. You guys give up six six goals in each of the matches. So how how did that kind of change things this past weekend? Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, was kind of one of our f main points of focus from the beginning is just getting better defensively. I mean, you know, we had a uh, a rough game against USC, our second game of the season, and and that kind of um, opened up our eyes to hey, you know, we got to kind of <laughs> shore things up a little bit, right? And so uh, yeah, we've 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 uh, you know made that a priority in our practices, and it's definitely paying off and showing in in our results. And you guys still aren't, you were telling me earlier, I mean, you're still kind of nursing some early season injuries and you're not even close to being really where you, uh, near 100%. Yeah, we haven't, um, besides the first weekend, uh, we haven't played with that starting group or what, you know, what our projected starters would be um, just due to various injuries and things like that. So, uh, you know, I think that that speaks a lot about the depth of our team and, and uh, people stepping up and filling roles, and uh, you know, there's there's definitely not um, a drop off after our you know fifth or sixth player, and we can go two, three, four deep on the bench and, and not lose anything. And, and that obviously is is I mean that's that's important in, in any sport and in any league, but especially in your league in the MPSF and the you know the best water polo <laughs> conference in the country. Uh, that is uh, obviously very important to be as deep as possible because those teams are very deep ahead of you. Yeah, I, I think um, you know most of the MPSF teams. Their their second string would be a top ten team on its own. <laughs> you know, so some of these teams are actually fielding two top ten teams. Right, it's happened to be on the same team. So yeah, that <laughs> that, that that depth really comes into play, especially in, in, in long tournaments and you know even in the course of a game. Um, you know, which is just more important for us to be in you know top shape and you know to be able to hang with those teams for four quarters. And how many, I mean, I, if you could ballpark it, how many national teams slash Olympians are on these other teams you're facing inside the MPSF? Yeah, I think I think last year um, there was probably eight 
players who played in the 2012 Olympics <laughs> that were members of either Stanford, USC, Arizona right. State. Yeah. Well, how is that? But that seems to have helped, even though you, you, you've struggled against them because of the, the quality of, 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 of opponent, because of the depth they have. But that seems to have at least helped you guys – a little bit. You know what I'm saying? As far as maybe re- attracting recruits uh, now t- ranked 20th in the country because mm-hmm. of your strength of schedule, the groups you're playing. I mean, that has helped the program a little bit, though, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to, to pinpoint what exactly, you know, ha- has got us here. But uh, I definitely feel like we've got a uh, last couple of years. Our recruiting class has been stronger, um, a little bit higher level athletes. Um, I think the ec- when I recruit, uh, they know they know what the expectations are. Yeah. Um, whereas pr- when we made the transition from the previous conference to this one, you know, some of the girls that were in the program, that's not what they really had in mind when they were coming to Bakersfield. And so now um, they they know what they're getting into. Yeah. And so I think that helps and in, 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 with with the mentality and and uh, um, you know they, they're 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 coming here because they want the challenge of playing against the best players in the world. Oh yeah, absolutely, and it seems uh, you guys are getting. I mean, a couple early ones this year uh, didn't go your way, but you've had some some close battles with some of these teams as well. I mean, so when you when you finally knock one of these teams off, that's gonna be that's gonna be a huge feather in your cap, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. We're we're, we're close. Yeah, uh, we're real close. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think one of the, one of the, the one of the next steps we have to make is just realizing that you know if we can play. LMU to a one goal game and um, who was ranked 10 last or ninth last week and we could play Northridge to a very close three goal game who should be ranked 10th this week yeah um, there's no reason why we can't play ASU tough um, you know Cal San Jose you know so uh, you know I think there's still a little bit of a, a gap there as to what we actually think we can you know are capable of doing and and, and uh, you know once we get over that that mental hump I think yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jason Gall, our head co- or our headwater polo coach here on Roadrunner Rundown, uh, looking uh, looking at the, the the sport right now. I mean, we talked a little about the recruits you're attracting, but um, you know, wh- where kind of does water polo stand? I mean, it seems like uh, uh, it, it's getting a it's it, it's getting a bit stronger here, and uh, just on the national NCAA scale. I mean, what have you what have you seen with with water polo the last couple of years? Yeah, there hasn't been too much change as far as adding mm-hmm. or or um cutting sports it's been pretty stable over the last few years uh you know on, on the on the club level uh i think the the u.s water polo membership is still growing and and you know water polo is a uh california primarily cal- yeah. california based sport but uh the sport's still growing in popularity and uh you know our our women's team won the gold in the, in, in london um, in 2012, and, and the men in 2008 got silver. So we've we've had some international success mm-hmm. also. Um, but uh, you know, even in Kern County, you know, we have a couple of the high schools now right. um, that have added, and so you know, it's, it's grown in Kern County as well. And, but for you as a coach, I mean, you're still probably most of your recruiting base is coming from the club level. I mean, it's not really a high school sport that's really taken root. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the best the, the the players that that are going to play in college, are playing year-round, you know, through the, through the club circuit. So mm-hmm. you can see, you know, the best players from each area playing on one club team. And so, you know, you get a club tournament, and, and it's basically an all-star tournament, more or less. And so, uh, you know, that's that's the, the easiest way to kind of see everyone. You know, if they're not playing year-round water polo, then they're, they're probably not going to be looking to play in collegially. Nice. Now, uh, you guys, uh, like we mentioned, on the road uh, this week again at uh, at Cal Baptist. You're going to take on Whittier and uh, and Redlands. Your uh, your thoughts, real quick, on those opponents? Yeah, they're. Um, I think Whittier's ranked number two in Division three right now, and and Redlands. Uh, they're always one of the top uh, women's teams in the Division three, and so uh, you know we're just going to keep um, you know focusing on trying to keep that that goals against low, that <laughs> defense, and and uh, trying to get that chemistry on offense you know we're still you know we're putting up a decent amount of points but we're missing a lot of opportunities you know just that passing needs to be a little bit better and and our shooting percentage can improve a little bit uh so you know opportunity to work on those little things that that really matter make a difference absolutely uh, coach good luck this weekend congrats on the four game winning streak let's make it six right. uh this weekend and then you guys are back at home or open up at home march 7th that's right
Great. Who do you got March 7th again? Uh, ASU. Okay. And uh, it's our alumni game also. So okay. we have ASU followed by our alumni game. Nice. And uh, and uh, we'll have more details on that as we get closer. But uh, good luck this weekend, Coach, and uh, Thanks, we'll Corey. chat again soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Jason Gall here on Roadrunner Rundown. we got to get out of here, folks. Make sure you join us next week on the program as we continue into the uh, sort of, I don't know, we just call it this sort of crazy time of year. You've got, uh, you got the basketball seasons going on. You've got baseball, water polo, softball. It's all in action. So a lot of stuff to get to on Roadrunner Rundown and catch up each week by the way online at gorunners.com and there's a brand new special feature roadrunner rundown player in the uh, corner of our all new gorunners.com show lives on the front page at all times you can check it out and archive editions as well uh, at gorunners.com follow us on facebook facebook.com slash csub roadrunners on twitter and instagram at csub athletics my thanks to head coach head baseball coach bill kernan and water polo coach jason golf for joining us on the program we'll catch you next week folks this has been roadrunner rundown